All I want to do is make a dad joke now. Well, we're, we're rocking. Because you said we're rolling. All right, you're here with Ben, and this morning we're setting off for a day trip to Neuschwanstein Castle. You know, shame to admit it, as globally cool as I am, I'd never even heard of Neuschwanstein Castle until I was traveling through Bavaria. But as it turns out, this is actually one of the world's most famous castles. It's immaculately preserved, because, let's be honest, instead of being a battle-hardened fortress, it's kind of just a legit fairy castle that has almost always been a tourist attraction. So since everyone else but me seems to already know all about it, let's figure out how we're gonna get us there. Okay, so I think I've figured it out. This trip is going to involve a couple transportation changes and some very important pre-planning. Don't worry though, as I'm going to guide you through it so that you can experience this without much of an issue. Before we begin even thinking about transportation, we've got to consider the castle tickets. You see, Neuschwanstein is one of the most popular attractions in Germany, bringing in 1.3 million visitors annually. And in the height of summer, 6,000 people per day can show up hoping for a tour. Additionally, and here's kind of the problem, visitors can actually only visit by a guided tour. You can walk Walk up to it and hike around it without a ticket, but if you want to go inside, you're going to need one. So I'd heed my warning and avoid the long lines and the possibility of what happens to some people and it's pretty tragic of showing all the way up there only to find out there's nothing they can do for you. In fact, we're going in the off season and I'm still not risking it. But anyway, now that we've got all of our tickets planned, let's actually get to the train so we can go. All right. Step two then, transportation. In total, and this is a bit crazy, we're gonna be budgeting four to five hours of transit before our scheduled tour. How'd I factor that? Firstly, visitors must arrive at the castle at least 90 minutes ahead of their book tour. They don't really trust you to arrive on time. And with that in mind, transportation goes as follows. Two hours from the Munich Hauptbahnhof to the castle's closest town, Fusen. Then, there's a 15 minute bus ride to the actual castle base. Pro tip. Use the bathroom on the train instead of waiting for Fusen. You see, the buses are synced up with the trains, so the moment you arrive, those buses are going to want to leave. And the bathrooms at Fusen, few and far between. Plus, they cost a couple euro to even use, it's a massive bottleneck. I saw many a panicked traveller standing near those cubicles. Then once you're off the bus, there is a bit of a walk from the bus to the castle itself. Plus, you probably will still need to pick up your ticket. This is kind of where that 90 minutes comes into play. I think they assume you're going to crawl up the mountain. Based on that information, that's why we're leaving so early. So let's go. One more pro tip. So on the left side of the train. Uh, the views are a lot better that way, especially when you're coming into Fusion. All right, let's go. Brilliant. So once you take a right up the hill, it's actually really not that far, uh, you hit the main building where you can purchase your tickets. The line can be kind of long. Now luckily, I've already bought mine, so we're just gonna walk on by, but I think you might wanna see it. How badly do I not want to be in those lines? Oh my God. This is off season, like I said, and it's still that bad. So again, buy your tickets online. So when you get off the bus, you still need to actually make your way to the castle. I believe they have carriage rides that you can do, but personally, I'm just gonna walk it. As you might be able to guess, it is an uphill walk, but it only takes about 30 minutes. So, not too bad. It's a particularly warm day, regardless of the snow, so it should be really lovely. Okay, so we've got our tickets and the tour is just about to start. You can actually see people starting to trickle in right now. Unfortunately, photography is completely forbidden within the grounds. This is kind of the best I can show you. And from here on out, no cameras at all. The tour only takes about 30 minutes since only 15 of the 200 planned rooms were actually finished. So I'll just have to meet you back here or around in the grounds after the tour so I can tell you what else there is to do. So, since I can't actually take you into the castle, I figure 
why don't I just tell you some fun facts while we overlay some B-roll that we took. The very, very limited B-roll. Now, Schwanstein sits above the Alpine town of Fusen. This is in southern Bavaria, and we're right next to the border with Austria. The castle is most famously associated with King Ludwig II of Bavaria, also known as the Swan King, the Fairy Tale King, and less affectionately, the Mad King Ludwig. He began construction of Neuschwanstein in 1869, and you may be thinking, hold up a second, the mid-1800s? seems a little late for castle building, and you'd be completely right. At the time, German culture was completely preoccupied with romanticized notions of the Middle Ages. I'm not gonna say it, but we're all thinking, make Germany great again. Nobles were renovating all the buildings and undertaking new projects to create a picturesque version of their medieval history. Ludwig was absolutely no exception, and he reflected these ideals through the construction of Neuschwanstein itself. He finally moved into the palace as it neared completion in 1884. Unfortunately, he mysteriously died while going out for a walk with his doctor in 1886, having only lived in his palace for about 172 days. They say tourists started making the trek out here to view the castle almost immediately after. The tour was really great, and the views from the inside are absolutely amazing. He definitely made the castle's function its form, which is a little strange for a castle, isn't it? If I may be a little honest with you though, the tour isn't completely necessary. Most of the rooms are unfinished, and though it is really great being in there, it's not the end of the world. I still think it's quite worth coming out here, even if you're not gonna do the tour at all. In fact, a lot of people actually recommend that you just come here to walk around all the trails around the castle. Considering the best part of this whole thing is the exterior anyway, you get most of the gains from just walking around. It's really fun just sort of basking in its shadow, very fairy tale like as you're walking around the Bavarian woods. In fact, there are a lot of trails marked all around here. The most important one going to Marienbrücke, a suspension bridge that goes over a gorge. All of this is really well marked at the base of the road on the way up to Neuschwanstein itself, and also while you're up here. You can also pick up a paper map at the station like I did, or take a look at the digital one I've linked down below. On the flip side, even if you aren't really into walking or hiking or anything like that, and you're actually here just to tour the inside of the castle, I would still recommend even just walking a few meters on any of the trails, because they're gonna give you access to much better Instagram photos. Not that there's anything wrong with the selfie in front of the gate, but everyone here has one. So you should have a little bit more than that, right? Problem though, at least for me, hopefully not for you, but the trail from up at Neuschwanstein to Marienburger is closed for maintenance and I'm assuming also ice. However, on the way up here, I noted that the trail up to Marienburger from the bottom was open. So I'm gonna give that a go, but no promises. Hopefully you have better luck. Regardless, let's go walk some trails. I guess technically they closed off the gate at the bottom. Not that anyone seems to care. They closed off the gate at the top, but I wouldn't be the first to walk this path now, would I? I am not gonna tell you to break the rules, and I really do wanna show you this bridge. See if I can do this one-handed. So slippery. Okay, almost died. That's how badly I wanna show you this bridge. So let's go see what we can find, right? If I post this video, you can assume that I'm okay. So we made it to Mariensbrücke. It's pretty awesome and the gorge is beautiful. Now, truth being told, it was actually close for maintenance, so the signs weren't lying and just trying to convince us not to come here. You can't actually go over on the bridge. That's a bit of a shame, since I bet the views of the waterfall are absolutely fantastic. As you can tell, I'm not the only one who made it up here, which is really great. It's always nice to not feel so alone when you're, when you're trespassing, but I'm really glad we made it up here anyway. I was actually really worried when we first saw the signs that you weren't supposed to be coming up here, that we wouldn't be able to show you all of the awesome trails around here because honestly, to me, that was the linchpin of the whole video. A lot of people would expect it to be the castle itself, but I think the walking through Bavaria in, in these mountains is just fantastic. Anyway, time to head back down and I really hope I don't die. <laughs> it was hard enough getting up here.
All right, so we've made it. We're here at Hohenschwanger, which is where Ludwig II, the person who built Neuschwanstein, spent his summers as a child. The land and previously dilapidated castle was actually purchased by his father in 1832. The oldest parts of the castle, though, actually date back to the 12th century, where it was first written down and recorded as a fortress. Upon his father's death, Ludwig actually started taking a full-time residence in this castle, and it was also then when he started building Neuschwanstein. Again, sadly, we can't actually record inside, so this is gonna be it for me and you until after the tour. All of the nature and castle views have been really amazing, but we're gonna round out our day in the closest town and train station of Fusen. Now, just a few blocks away from that train station is the actual main high street of Fusen, which is decorated with all of these beautiful painted buildings and murals everywhere, which make it a really lovely place to come and unwind after a long day wandering through the mountain. What makes it special is that it's a particularly emblematic example of the Romantic Road, which is a series of Bavarian villages connecting Voigtsburg and Fusen. Personally, I can't even get enough of this stuff. It's actually the reason why I moved to Munich in the first place, is just access to places like this. So enough chatting, let's go. Fun fact, Fusen is actually considered the cradle of loot making. The first loot makers guild was actually formed here in 1562. During the height of the loot's popularity, there were up to 20 different loot luthiers here working with their own individual workshop. Who even wants that many loots? And as loot fell out of fashion, the town found itself switching to violin as well. Hundreds of luthiers immigrated and then emigrated elsewhere to Europe and spread the luthier tradition of Fusen. And to this day, you can still see the Fusen influence in modern violin making. bit bright <laughs> but no worries we didn't actually plan on doing this today but we had some extra room in our shooting schedule so we figured we'd take a walk by the uh, the river I believe it's called the Altse and just as we headed I believe it was south of Fusen as we were deciding to turn back around and walking along one of the roads we found a little there's this really nice park uh, that leads up to the monastery so we decided to go give it a check out I figured that would be more scenic than just walking on the roads I'd recommend it. It's a bit hard to walk around it in the, uh, in the ice to get up here, but once you're up here, it's fine. But yeah, it's nice, I like it. And the views are really good. See the mountains in the background, hopefully. GoPro might not show that very well. But then also, monastery. So if you find yourself having some extra time, and you're just walking around the city, you should give this a thought. I think you'll like it.
All right, hey everybody. So we're back at home after our trip to Neuschwanstein. You know what time it is. We're going to talk about our impressions and then most importantly, our recommendations. So let's not waste time. Let's jump right in. Camille, what was your impression of Neuschwanstein? <laughs> okay, I don't like doing this because I'm going to be a little bit negative. It's your natural state. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that Neuschwanstein is very touristy and very famous. It's been touristy mm -hmm. for a hundred years. That is not the way I like to travel. I like right. to at least attempt to get out into the culture mm -hmm. and try to learn how the people act and, and what the area sure. is like. This is not possible, possible in uh, Neuschwanstein. Right. It is very much for people to visit mm -hmm. and for people to leave. Like you're in Bayern, but you're not hearing a lot of Bayerish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, aside from the beautiful landscape and countryside, Can't nothing else is particularly Bayerish. Right. But with that being said, what was your take on, like, Fusen? Uh, compare it to some of the other Bavarian towns, you think? Fusen is not completely touristy. There, right, you can right. still tell that it is the village that is sure. associated with Kanstein. That. But it's nice. I would, I would recommend going. I really enjoyed my time there. Right. And so that leads me to my impression, which was of all the things that we did, uh, Fusen, Hohenschwangau, walking around by that river, and then the paths around Neuschwanstein, and then finally the Neuschwanstein tour, the Neuschwanstein tour itself and the Neuschwanstein-centric stuff, those were my least favorite, mm -hmm. to the point that, hey, Kitty, mm -hmm. I would actually recommend that you consider skipping uh, the actual tour itself. It's a lot of hassle. Uh, there's a lot of waiting in lines and a lot of standing around of the tourists and not a lot of, like, getting out there. You know, the paths around Neuschwanstein, <laughs> they're fantastic. Um, Hohenschwangau, I think, is a little prettier, uh, just in that lived-in sort of way. And then Fusen feels far more medieval than some of the other uh, towns, such as like Garmisch-Partenkirchen or, or Mittenwald and all that. So like, I would add it to the arsenal. I would probably go there just to do all that and not do the tour. Um, but yeah, and so that kind of leads us into uh, recommendations. Uh, who would you recommend this for? I would recommend this for people who are coming to Germany for the first time. Maybe this could be one of the first day trips you do because it's very well marked. People are expecting tourists to come here. They know exactly where to shunt them. So if right. you have a lot of anxiety about just getting around right. anywhere but a big city, this right. might be a good option for you. Or even if you're just visiting Germany and you have the fear of missing out with Neuschwanstein. Yeah, because everyone else is gone. Yeah, it's the most, it's the most popular attraction. Right. And you're often going to be in the area anyway, especially if you watch some of our other videos. Please watch them. Uh, because they put you in that area anyway. There's all sorts of stuff. So sometimes you just really can't miss it. And so obviously my recommendation is very similar to the, yours. It's going to be for beginners. It's just kind of who it's for. I assume anybody who isn't a beginner has already gone, honestly. Um, the hardest parts about it are going to be getting your ticket from Munich to uh, Fusen itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's not that hard if you learn how to use the Deutsche Bahn machines or you just go to one of the humans and buy it there. The other hard part is all the, like, the online ticketing, collecting your tickets and waiting in line. Skip all of that anyway. That's my recommendation. Yeah. But anyway, let me know what you think. I want to hear you. I'm sure some of you have gone, so let me know how that went. Do you agree with our impressions? Do you disagree? People who want to go, hit me up in the comments. Let's talk about it. But other than that, you know. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. True. And thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Bye.